Howdy everyone, my name is Jack and today I have a special video for you. Today I'll be doing a combination video, just to get right to the point. It is a Fallout challenge run and a Pokemon Nuzlocke at the same time, as you might see. So basically, can you beat Fallout New Vegas if it were a Pokemon Nuzlocke run? Okay, now that that's out of the way, what the fuck does this even mean? Let me explain you some rules, as all Nuzlocke runs have. This one will have four main overarching rules that I'll list out here. Any gun that breaks due to poor condition is considered dead, and must be dropped where it runs out of condition at. The player must use the first gun that they come across within each area, sectioned off as routes. There can be no duplicate weapons, and any duplicate weapons must be dropped immediately. The trait built to destroy must be taken, as it decays weapons 15% faster, adding more to the challenge, and each quest completion allows me to increase my repair skill past a certain threshold. I'll explain these as we go along, of course, but this parallels the map max level requirement in Pokemon Nuzlocke. These rules can then be followed by additional rules, which sort of parallel typical Nuzlocke run optional rules. I'll list off ones that I used specifically. I can only pick up weapons and armor from dead bodies, whether I killed them or not. This will include bodies like the dead fiends inside of Repcon HQ, who are just dead. Duplicate weapons can be ignored, and the next weapon that is not a duplicate can be used as if it were the first weapon. Hardcore must be enabled. In doing so, the only healing items I can use are stim packs, food, non-alcoholic drinks, and rattle. Way. Death is not considered a loss because it's funny ragdoll. The only thing considered a loss is when all of my weapons reach zero durability. And of course, no DLC weapons because that's just full durability weapons for free. With all of that out of the way, let's begin the run. And in beginning the run, we see the most familiar fan in the world. And then we see the most familiar bald head in the world. Well, maybe the second most for some of us out there. In my efforts to begin this run, I start a bit of planning ahead of time. Because later on, I can't sneak all of my weapons into the casino and the fact that I'm going to be playing both on a hardcore and on hard because I, I hate my hair, I like to tear it out, I need to be a little sneaky with my character. After giving myself a very potent name, my thinking comes to fruition. I choose to be a woman and continue to make myself quite possibly the most beautiful, divine, and goddess-like woman in the Mojave Wasteland. Afterwards, it's time for me to think about what the hell kind of special attributes I need. My first repair threshold begins after completing They Went That Away, which allows me to increase my repair skill to level 25, which increases the effectiveness of my weapon repair kits to 15% from 10%. So I think about it quite a bit, sitting there, looking through each skill and what I could possibly do with my special points. This is what I decided to do for my special, making it as hard as I can for myself without directly inflicting my ability to win with the big scary denied stamp. I went for an average, all-around, typical, run-of-the-mill character kind of build, except for luck, because critical hits would have to carry me quite a bit. Also, you can't have the channel motto be stay lucky and not have 9 luck, right? Next up, I chose to tag the guns, medicine, and survival skills. Guns, because most of the weapons in the game fall under that category, so I'd have a higher likelihood of finding these weapons than anything else. Medicine, so my stim packs would actually help me in hardcore mode, and survival, so food and water would heal more, and, again, also also help me in hardcore mode. Also, so I could cook stuff at fire pits, which I do like three times, so that doesn't, doesn't really matter. Uh, every other skill is useless, except speech, lockpick, science, sneak, and repair, and explosives, and energy weapons and barter. Okay, so maybe not every other skill. I will say that I will not be using speech to make this game easier by playing 60 chess with Legate Lanius at the end. I felt that'd just be a cop-out of sorts, going with the easiest path. The reason I'm doing this is for difficulty and to challenge myself. Right? I will, however, be leveling up my speech so that I can actually complete particular quests quicker or get more XP. Because if I don't, I run the risk of breaking all of my weapons pretty early on without a, the chance to get to the end. For traits, I chose Built to Destroy for the increased crit chance, which is abysmally low to be honest, but also for the 15% increased decay speed. This will have to be taken into account for certain weapons. For the most part, it doesn't become a huge problem except in large gunfights or in fights against tougher enemies, which does prove to be an annoyance later on. The other trait that I choose, however, after a lot of thought and consideration, is Hoarder. This is because I'm going to be playing on Hardcore, and collecting quite a bit of ammo anyway, and additionally, with perks like Strongback, I don't really have to worry about carrying capacity quite as fast as I thought I would. This choice is just to, once again, make it harder for me because I'm a fucking masochist, at least when it comes to video games. As I leave the good old dock, I keep the weapon he gave me for a little while, though I don't end up using it much, and continue on my way for a ghost town gunfight. While that happens in the background, I'll tell you what I originally planned. Initially, I was going to do a random roll for which weapon I was going to tag, and perhaps even restrict myself to those weapons. However, I chose not to, despite recording the dice roll, in order to give myself the choice regarding strategy. That's 
that's literally it. Anyway, I pick up the snow globe for an easy 2000 cap slider, get disrespected by some bottles before I disrespect them, and then go hunt some geckos. I end up killing one, not sure if Sunny killed the other or not, but I end the tutorial here because fuck it, this part of the game is so ingrained into my head that it, it doesn't even matter at this point. I could get the experience just by thinking about it. I head back to Trudy, talk to her in Joe Cobb's face, and he somehow hears none of it. All of that dynamite up his ass might have gotten to him. Then we do the typical New Vegas start. We run over to Ringo, he threatens to shove a gun in my no-no zone with words that sound nothing like any of that, then we rush over to Sunny. She agrees to help because Sunny Smiles actually means suicidal maniac and I have literally no ability to convince anyone else to help me, so it's time for the gunfight. I hunker down behind a large box with Cheyenne, and then Ringo, and I really let everyone else do most of the work. I fire a few shots for my laser pistol and then I see it. My first dead body. The first weapon of this run is a single shotgun. Well, it's a single, single shotgun. One single shotgun. I also pick up some dynamite because it doesn't have conditions, so I'll pick it up when I can and just stop using it when I run out of ammo for it entirely. Explosives weapons are a weird thing in this rule set that I haven't quite figured out a set of rules for specifically. Anyway, after killing Joe Cobb and becoming liked by the people of Good Springs, they immediately turn on me and attack because I chose to put on the Powder Ganger armor piece I picked off that poor sod's dead body. Hey, I need survivability too, you know. Despite them seeing me put it on in their face, it's an egregious sin to be certain. I hightail it the hell out of there, being shot at as I do, and I end up with a little over half health remaining, and ultimately I escape. I'll be back though, good springs. I swear it. If you notice in the bottom right, there's a little map screen that I'll have zoomed in on where I am in terms of which route. This will be handy to show you where I pick up each weapon, and I'll do my best to maintain it with each cut I may or may not do. Regardless, with this powder ganger armor on, I believe it is time to do some powder ganger quests, because why not, free XP. Just before entering my next route, I end up being absolutely destroyed by a powder charge that I... I knew was there. This means two of my limbs are broken, and I'm going to have to deal with the limping for quite some time. But thankfully, this matters little, because I'm arriving at the NCRCF. I pickpocket the key, escape inside, and everyone treats me like I was willingly allowed to enter the building. And truth be told, this is only the third time I've ever worked with the Powder Gangers. I prefer the title of The Powder Gangers Grim Fucking Reaper, but alas, not this time. Not yet, at least. We have to head to the West Camp? South Camp? Southwest Camp? West South Camp? Whatever. We have to kill Hugo Chavez and free Venezuela. This part gets tough because the single shotgun isn't particularly lethal if I'm if I'm being frank. Though today, I suppose I'm being Amy, as in amazed that one of the powder gangers gives up entirely and just runs away, which effectively lets me destroy their entire group. The first weapon I find is a single shotgun, and as per my rules, it doesn't count, so I move on. The other weapons were either single shotguns or already broken or flung off into the sunset. I return to Eddie and he sends me on my way to the next part of the mission. We've got to hunt down a merchant. Well, I, uh, I shot him in the face, but he was very tough. Thankfully, Victor was there to protect me. I mean, I never asked him to be, and I never planned on him to be, but I didn't know he was still around Good Springs. I thought he dipped immediately towards Novak when I left Good Springs. But hey, easy kill. I can't take his weapon, unfortunately, because I already picked up Route 1's weapon, but that's alright. We can turn in the quest anyway. I decide not to mess with the NCR near the entrance to Prim. My armor might tip them off to something being a little wonky. Yes, I could have unequipped it, but at the time, I was also listening to a podcast, so I paid little attention to the start of the game. I just decided to go around. Enter the Jackal Gang. I pick up a cowboy repeater here with a bunch of ammo and some purified water too. That'll be absolutely helpful. I also get a Wasteland Wanderer outfit so I can go into Prim without being shot at. Well, I could have already if I just unequipped the damn armor, but it is what it is. Now in Prim, it's time to do the typical Prim stuff, which means going into the Bison Steve Hotel to save Mr. Bison Steve himself. I I mean, Deputy Beagle. I can finally use a doctor's bag here in town, and then head inside Bison Steve. I almost immediately get my head broken again, thanks to Mr. Cowboy Repeater over there, but my single shotgun makes surprisingly short work of him. Grab some more dynamite off of him, and then it's time for the real fun. And when I say real fun, I'm talking about the good old American pastime of blowing shit up. I start the show with a shotgun blast, and then lob dynamite. I end up taking out quite a few of them, and have to hide behind a desk before killing off the rest. I see one of the convicts wanted to repent for his way, being peaceful until I get in his face, but I send his brain sky high in every other direction he can feasibly think of. Well, well, could feasibly think of, but now I have to find a new sheriff. This is where I decide to side with the NCR. I don't really care about that Myers guy. I've seen Halloween kills already. My motivation to like him is gone. It's a good thing that I don't actually solve those issues and instead get a couple of quests to gain some NCR fame instead. Prim can burn. I don't need Eddie or... 
or the Nashes. That's how little Prim means to me. I can't even think of why I want the place to stick around. After talking to Jackson and Ghost, it's high time I head towards Nipton. On the way there, I succeeded in my childhood dreams of sticking dynamite down ant holes to blow the ants to high heaven. Then further down the line, I ambushed the Jackal gang instead of the other way around. They're no match for my dynamite power. I also get a 10mm pistol off of them. Nearing Nipton, I find the two dummies battling for star bottle caps. As I try to put Tomas out of his misery, he ends up being God for a few seconds and forces my dynamite to fizzle out. In my hand, even. Thankfully, I managed to put him down and steal most of his shit, including some leather armor, which I don't end up using much throughout the run. Volpace does his inculting, and I return to Mojave Outpost to do some stuff, but not before picking up a laser rifle and Nipton, giving me my fourth weapon, well, fifth, fifth weapon, technically. I tell Ghost that Nipton is lost, Jackson that the ants have been atomized, the one guy about how the Legion is here, this far west, and I manage to level up. I forgot to mention that I took the perk Black Widow at level 2, but now I take Educated for that extra experience at level 4. Returning to Prim, I decide to use the superpower of Betrayal to turn on Eddie and the Powder Gangers. Who would have thought? I inform Lieutenant Hayes that I want to help storm the castle prison. Castle. Prison. Castle. Prison. Castle. And it all ends up going over incredibly smoothly. By the end of it all, I am standing among a sea of bodies, both... NCR and CFPG. I finally get a weapon for Route 13 in the form of a service rifle off of one of the bodies of the NCR troops, and now I no longer get another weapon from this route. Sorry every single weapon the Brotherhood might have had, I can't take you with me. After this mission, I decide to ditch the rest of the NCR here for now and continue on to Novak, run through Nipton, dodge the dude with the grenade launcher, and continue onwards. However, I decided I wanted to try to get that grenade launcher though. Too bad it turns out he was on the other side of the cliff because I just pick up a stupid little knife that a guy ran at me with. That won't see much use, especially because my current situation doesn't say much in the way of melee being beneficial. Regardless, I continue through the rest of this route until I finally reach Novak, which I beeline for. Though before I get there, I did find some legionaries fighting the Viper Gang ambush. Jackal Gang ambush? Viper Gang. I don't remember. I momentarily thought about joining the Legion because they, they helped me so much. Nah, fuck them. As I enter Route 19, I end up leveling up. Curiously, I, I get a perk at level 5? I spent time searching through my mod manager as well as my local files, but could only find evidence of having New Vegas Anti-Crash, New Vegas Script Extender, and the 4GB patch installed. Anyway, I do my do and I speak to some new people. First, I get all of my crippled and broken and contorted limbs healed by the lovely Dr. Strauss who offers free tetanus shots. Then I decide to do Boone's quest, even though I don't use companions in this run. For some reason, Jeannie Mae doesn't realize that I, a stranger, walking into the lobby, crouching behind her and making some weird metal jingling noises is definitely not normal. After I talk to Manny, I decide to go to Repcon and snipe some ghouls. Thankfully, none of them have weapons. This isn't Fallout 4 either, so I'm also thankful for that. I pick up a plasma rifle from the Bright Brotherhood Ghoul's body and enter Repcon for some fun in the radioactive sun. Nothing really fancy happens in here. Nothing really funny either. So let's see. Um, which button was it again? Hmm. Oh, this one. Okay, alright. Uh huh. Hmm. Okay, now, now how do I. Wait, 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 wait hold on. Okay, okay, whew. So where are we? Oh, we're talking to Chris after picking up the rocket fuel thing. Anyway, after pausing for like seven minutes for some reason, I forget why, it's time to head to the Gibson graveyard. Nah, just kidding, I don't have high enough lockpick, and instead I choose to turn Novak into a graveyard. A graveyard for one person. The next part of the recording might be a little odd looking because I accidentally screen recorded instead of recording the window, but hopefully that's alright. Hey, if it's not, dislike the video. After dispatching the trader, I say fuck it and pay 500 caps to the old woman at the dog yard and return to Chris. Unfortunately, I don't have the good smarts to cause the rockets to go somewhere else, beyond the veil of their immediate life. So I just shrug my shoulders and let them go to their destination. An unfortunate end to a very boring quest after playing it for the umpteenth time. Good luck ghouls, hope you don't crash and burn alive for the second time. At level 6 I take the perk bloody mess for that extra 5% damage and I'm on my way. One step closer to the end. Except, instead of taking one step closer to the end, I go back to Prim and decide to give them a new sheriff. Or sheriffs. Or martial law. Heavy taxes. Safety over freedom. Basically, it's NCR time, okay? NCR. It's none too hard. Lieutenant Hayes to Major Knight to Lieutenant Hayes. Prim is taken care of. 
I level up again, but I don't get a perk at level 7. Strange. But I guess after this run is done, I'll be reinstalling the entire game from the ground up, just to make sure nothing is wrong. And it's Helios one time. Of course, since I'm favoring the NCR, I get my way in pretty quickly and easily. Additionally, I meet my first semi-difficult part of the game. It's not difficult because it's hard, it's difficult because I'm an idiot, so let's go over my shortcomings here. First, I meet Fantastic. That was my first mistake. Something about theoretical physicism or whatever. It sounds like magic to me, so I'm going to ignore it. Then I talk to Ignacio and he tells me to divert power to the whole region. He's going to be very sorry to know that I would probably just end up nuking the whole region if I played the Lonesome Road DLC. Well, the NCR and the Legion. Then I roleplay PETA three times to be exact and become a hacker from the 90s. Entering the facility is when it really begins. I have to deal with a turret and they're angry. I try to run out the door and turn around, but get my leg broken in the process. No big deal, I've had worse. I disable the mines, but don't steal them because that's evil and I'm not evil. Then the game crashes. I return to my brokenless, limbed position and pump myself full of whatever it is programmers digest in the morning. I reset the turret targeting and can easily manage them now, especially because the Protectron at the very bottom is also my ally, by technicality. I swear, I remember dying more than zero times in this entire section. I guess a crash can count as a death, right? Yeah, whatever. I dispatch the Protectrons too after taking quite a large amount of damage. I do get my arm and leg broken though, so I'll have to deal with that for a little bit. With little else to do here, I output the power to McCarran in the Las Vegas Strip, press the button, and get a taste of the power of the sun. Hmm. Tastes like citrus. Welcome to Boulder City, they told me. This looks more like a rubble city. Then the game crashes again as I hone in on Kowalski and his dumbass brother's monument or whatever. After I convince Lieutenant Ligma to let me in, I jump scare the great cons with my not safe for work gore face, likely as it is because of Benny's bullet. I don't, I don't remember. And I level up. I take strong back because I need it for my scavenger rat gameplay. I should also point out that I've completed They Went That Away so I can put more points into my repair skill to breach 25, which means my weapon repair kits now repair 15% of the maximum condition of a weapon. However, I still only have a few of them. Uh, I believe three at this point to be exact. As I'm running past the 188 trading post, I pause for a little over half of this entire recording portion and then continue on to New Vegas. I come to terms with being a limping courier, unable to heal my crippled wounds until I reach New Vegas. The pain forges the greatest of malice towards my enemies. And... <laughs> There shall certainly be a lot of it. The gun runners have nothing for me because I hate the idea of using my bottle caps for a good weapon. Absolutely disgusting. How could anyone ever think buying powerful weapons is fun? And believe it or not, I've made it. After all of that limping, I'm finally in free side. And what do I get for it? Well, I get a fucking machete. I'm a keet. I'm a kete. I'm a sheet. A thug decided it was best to fuck with me and I stole his bushwhacking blade as a result. Before long, I've talked to Mr. Garrett and I'm on my way to give him exactly what he wants. The world's weirdest sexual circus. I'm just a courier, so thankfully, I don't have to deal with being part of that. I tell old Ben to get the fuck out of here and become an escort again, then stop by the Kings. I refuse to pay people to get into places anymore after being charged 500 caps for a shitty rocket Piece, so I abandoned all hope for talking to the king for now. Beatrix says she's down to clown with the circus of escorts and I try my best to purge the idea of a ugh. Uh, never mind, I'm starting to think about it again. I decide to go to Ralph to get the sex bot programming done instead of leveling up and wasting points in science. This is because I forgot about the key card in the locker with an average lock on it, which I could definitely do with anyway. It's a good thing there was a backup choice in this quest, otherwise I would have left it alone entirely. Several more side quests later, I go back on my word and pay Pacer some money to see the king. Mr. The King sends me to do something with a bodyguard, I don't know, I was merely pretending to pay attention to this quest. Regardless, I move on very quickly quickly think about whether I should let Pacer get murdered and then decide against it. It wouldn't be me killing him so the XP would go to waste. Ah well, maybe next time. The point is, NCR is happy, the king is happy, that means I'm happy for now. Using Veronica's charismatic and non-enslaved approach, I get into the Brotherhood of Technology stealing bunker and lament my shitty joke. And by lament, I mean praise. Always be confident in your shitty jokes. Now that I'm being sent out of my way to nab some documents for Old McDonald, I get to choose where I go. So I choose Repcon HQ. Here in Repcon HQ, we have it all. Robots wandering outside, the dead corpses of fiends as soon as you walk in, robots roaming around inside. Wait, what? Fiend corpses inside? Ah, oh, damn. 
That means my next weapon is a laser RCW, decked out in the finest of antique looking metals fit for firing pure laser energy somehow. Let's add it to the inventory. I don't get much ammo for it, so something tells me it won't be used. Something is also telling you that it won't be used. Not for a while, at least. I robbed the corpse of a dead brotherhood knight, leaving him only his heavy ass power armor and his shitty laser rifle, then I run away as fast as I can. Well, would you believe me when I say that it's time to nuke the boomers with friendship so they aid me in my eventual war of attrition? Yeah, I'm sure you would. You're not stupid after all. I weave my way through the explosive munitions, quite the warm welcome might I add, and scare the living daylight. Well, it's, it's night at the moment. I scare the living night lights out of the boomers. Pearl asks that I help around Nellis, so of course I do, I would love to. <laughs> I'm definitely not helping out because killing them all would be too difficult with my current situation as is. Definitely, absolutely not. I talk to myself, then to Loyal, and it's at this point that I forget that my head was broken. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you all that it was. My brain is now permanently used to this situation where everything goes all fuzzy every however many seconds. Rachel with a Q gives us a magnifying glass and tells us to burn some ants alive. Personally, I prefer advanced sonar waves to explode their heads as painfully as I can, so Loyal hooks me up with some help. And for anyone questioning why I don't do the tour and get a, an easy reputation increase with the boomers, I'll let you know it's because I'd rather lose this run because of a stupid mistake of mine than listen to that fucking tour. If I could shoot the kid, I would. Why? I don't know, shock value, I guess. After repairing the solar arrays and killing the ants in size, I pick up a combat knife. I could have had a fucking marksman carbine if that first body weren't there. I turn all of my quests in and talk to Pearl. Oh yeah, I also helped Jack find the girl of his dreams or whatever. Even in the 22nd century, it still seems that simps exist. Maybe China should nuke America a few more times, just to be sure. After rummaging through a suspiciously familiar shack that I could swear belongs to someone I know very well, I realize that what I'm going to do next to help Loyal requires me to go through Deathclaw territory. Of course, I could go around, but where's the fun in that? I'd rather barge straight through and die. Which I do. A few times, actually. The first time I died, I had forgotten that this was Deathclaw territory. Imagine my shock when I hear the combat music cue kick in and two Deathclaws come sprinting over the hill. Thankfully, I had stealth boys. Unthankfully, the area behind the Deathclaws belongs to Nightstalkers and Cazadors. If it isn't one thing, it's another. Besides the onslaught of deaths, which I'm sure you'll see the death counter increasing shortly hereafter, I managed to make it all the way past things more deadly than looking at my face for longer than a few seconds. From here, it takes little effort to swim out of to the plane after this, attach the ballast, swim back, and activate them. Usually I have to deal with some lake lurks near the plane, but I don't see any. I'm not complaining, except I am. Kill me more. I want to see funny ragdoll body. Actually, I regret saying that now. I return to Loyal to tell him his wet dream has been achieved, and Pearl promises to aid me and only me in the upcoming fight. Actually, she doesn't, but she does later when I return to ask her, so I thought I'd cover it here to save some ground. Okay, it's time to head into New Vegas. I have the 2,000 caps required for a credit check so I don't have to mass murder any robots. Not like I really could, given my current equipment and difficulty and my shockingly low amount of stim packs. Mr. House greets me like an asshole, telling me how long I've taken to get here, or maybe he was just letting me know I was destined for this. Either way, he's an asshole. I gotta go kick Benny's ass. Oh yeah, it is time to do it. Ha! Just kidding. I'm actually talking to Ambassador Crocker to cement my choice in helping the NCR. Okay, now it's Benny time. I decide to sex him up because it'd be funny to do it. Definitely for no other reason. Benny ends up slipping on his satin sheets and breaking his neck on the bedpost. Definitely no other reason for his death. I pick up the platinum chip from his corpse and level up. Oh yeah, when I hit level 12, I got my lock picking up to 50 and chose fight the power feat. Now I'm level 14 and I level up my repair more and choose the commando perk. Now you would normally know the rest, but I just don't go to the guy with the face in his home. Instead, I do Tommy Torini's quest and finish up Wang Dang Atomic Tango for the Garrett twins. Sex spot approved, quest completion. I also tell Mr. Crocker that the fairy godparents are going to help us at Hoover Dam. I also spend my favor with the king to send him to friendship school to make peace in Freeside. He comes back with a PhD. After more side quests for that sweet delicious XP, I find myself near the Sunset Sarsaparilla HQ. How did I get here? Oh, well you see, I sort of promised an old man that I'd killed some well-known fiends. Why did I do this? Ha! <laughs> ha! Well, I... Th thought it'd be easy. Ultimately, this turns out great because I collect a lever action shotgun. So not actually that great, considering I have no perks to help with shotguns. It's only after collecting this that I end up closer to Vault 3 where I get the weapon I was hoping I'd get the most. That's right, a hunting rifle. Probably my favorite weapon to use in New Vegas, the hunting rifle will be my ultimate key to victory. If I can aim with it, that is. 
Shortly after collecting my hunting rifle, I kill Cook Cook, level up, take adamantium skeleton so my body will buzz significantly less, and return to Camp McCarran to turn in the quest. This happens two more times, both with Driver Nefi and Violet, so you get the idea of how it all goes. I just don't get any weapons from either of those encounters. One thing that did happen was when I tried to melee fight Driver Nefi with my EU IQ level melee skill. I'm sure you can figure out how this went. Get fucked. It is now time to approach the end game. First is the Great Khans. I aim to peacefully end things here. I don't have the ammunition to spend on their skulls and other assorted important locations on their body. The other parts of this quest are easy enough. I mean, hell, it's just, it's it's a matter of doing some quick drug runs, stealing some stuff to vindicate the Legion Wacko, and convincing a drug lord to make healthier drugs. The real tough part is Melissa. Before I handle that though, I take down a couple of Legion ambushers. Too bad I already have a machete and can't take the weapons they have, otherwise that'd be a plus one. Alright, the, the road to Melissa is dangerous. In fact, the issue I had with doing the recovery quest for Loyal are the same issues I have here. Cazadors and Deathclaws. I don't have to tell you how dangerous they are, because they're more dangerous than a crab wielding your knife when all you're trying to do is prepare for a seafood sale. I dive five times here, to the same three Cazadors every single time, and it takes the good old plasmatic rifler to do the job. I do manage to sneak my way around the next three Cazadors, thank goodness, however it seems I've only talked about the Cazadors. Next up is the Death Claws. Thankfully, surprisingly, this part is a lot less frustrating. Stealth is my ally, and Melissa is mine. Well, well not mine, but not Caesar's either. Fuck him. Well, not literally, he has a brain tumor. I wouldn't want to catch that from him. Before doing anything else, I realize I must do what is necessary and wipe out the Legion's riverfront base. This is the most barbaric portion of my actions in this run, but what is soon to come hardly makes me regret this decision. I empty the back of the big trailer full of radioactive barrels, kill the Weathers family, whether they liked it or not, and move on. I did kill an enemy in Searchlight, but I got a combat knife, so I move on without a new weapon in my arsenal. Oh, also I saved Anders. Uh, he's unimportant though, even if he's important to the Great Khans. After completing more quests for the Great Khans, I level up to level 18 and take Shotgun Surgeon. Finally, now my shotguns will actually be helpful, except not at all because I'm still on hard. <sighs> Next up is the Omertas. Nobody dies except for Big Sal and Nero. Oh, and Clandon because he caught me pickpocketing him. Unfortunately, the game takes away all of my weapons except for my measly little knife that I collected way back when. And in this quest, Kachino gives you a shotgun. So I'll be treating this like the Lucario versus Lucario fight in Pokemon X and Y. It's something that I must do to progress the quest. So I'm going to use the weapon the game temporarily forces into my inventory. This quest is pretty quick to complete. And how it ends is the Omertas weapons are burned and exploded. Troik is free and Big Sal and Nero end up with their innards cosplaying as their outers. After turning in the quest, I must come back to the strip because I have another important mission. It is time to kill Captain Residence. Actually, I first head to the h, &H Tools facility to get the Lucky 38 VIP keycard, but that's a pretty simple a job. Nothing special happens there, just me showing off my acrobatic talents. Nobody's impressed, so I sneak into the Lucky 38 VIP section, bring King Abode forth into the germ-infested world yet again, and end his life. With Lord Dwelling turned into mincemeat, I must do what no other Brotherhood trustee has done before. I must blow up the Brotherhood of Steel bunker. Yes, I'm sorry to all of those who just wish to see the outside world. Unfortunately, the only outside world they'll be seeing is heaven. Praise God, hallelujah. At least I hope that's what they were saying as I stole each head keycard one by one, got a randomly generated NFT passcode, and activated the self-destruct. It was only a matter of serpentining, jumping, and dodging at speed reaching FTL quantities, but after I escaped, I turned around to hear the bunker explode. I don't even need to check for stragglers, my self-destructive habits showcase my prowess with self-destruction in general. Nearing the end now, I can see victory in my sights. Well, maybe it isn't victory. I don't have my glasses on and I have like 2200 vision or something really bad like that without them. Anyway, I just have to protect President Kimball from any assassination attempt. Part of me is actually tempted just to let it happen. In fact, you can see here me watching the sniper tower as Kimball makes his way to the stage. I remember changing my mind about letting him die, wanting to be the hero to the president, and demanding that he owes me a favor. It is sort of eerie how still I stood, holding one button before deciding to run at top speed to the tower. Oh, did you know, by the way, that the ranger that gets pushed down off the tower just disappears into the ground? That's funny. Anyway, I got a sniper rifle here, which isn't great considering I already have the hunting rifle, but it may come in handy later. Maybe. Probably. 
I also decide to disarm the bomb on the vertebrate, even if it would be funny to see the vertebrate explode as it left the dam. Well, that's that. I've completed everything I need to do up to this point. My repair skill can now be pushed all the way up to 100, maxing my weapon repair kit's repair ability out at 25%. I never, I never level up my repair that high because as you'll see soon, I had the foresight to realize just how many weapons may be lost in the battle for Hoover Dam. But this is where it all begins to end to begin to end. Hoover Dam shall be property of the NCR, not without a lot of hardship, but it shall nonetheless. And pretty much immediately, I discover hardship. What was this hardship? Well, you see, when you have an ammo shortage and your condition is what keeps the possibility of damage alive, you should probably not fight an entire group of Legion Centurions. Maybe just sort of run away as fast as you can. I, however, did not. So after burning quite a bit of ammo on the first group, I carry on. I also burn quite a bit of ammo on the second group before I pass out from exhaustion. A little blood came out with how hard I hit my head, but hey, give me a break. I hadn't slept in a well over a few hours, maybe. I keep trying for some reason to kick the Legion's ass, and I do before I have to move on. Except now I have to move on without armor because it broke and I had to drop it. I am now at my weakest, quite literally the worst possible thing to happen to me besides losing all of my weapons. The next room proves exactly that issue as I watch my fellow NCR Rangers get gunned down free of charge. The Legion then choose to gun me down free of charge, or maybe I tripped jumping off of a table, I haven't figured out which yet. I keep fighting until I decide to run into the room behind me so I don't die again. Except I die again because more Legions spawned there. Then I die again because the autosave was set right in front of them. So I load a quick save to before I went into the second room, only to find the Legion transcends literal space and time by appearing there in my old save that I had just freshly loaded when they weren't there before. So I abandon all hope and run to the next area because I do not want to deal with all of that. The next area of course is the final push over the top of Hoover Dam. Boy, this was rough. With no armor and very few viable weapons, this took me quite a few tries. I also had to be careful about what weapons I use and when because I can't rely on the NCR soldiers to carry me. They take way too much damage. For example, the plasma rifle has 31 reloads from full condition to breaking and it was sitting at about 30% condition. With the additional 15% decay rate, that means I only had about 8 more reloads before that thing would break if my math is right. That's not exactly a lot and with my restriction of not using speech on legit Lamius, I needed a few weapons to fight him and all of his surrounding bitch bottoms with. I fight my way forward as I find myself stuck on the first half of the dam but I ultimately lose all of my ammo for my laser RCW. Truthfully this isn't a big loss so I happily drop it, call it a sacked Pokemon if you will. I get caught off guard as more legions spawn behind me as I'm beelining for the halfway point and I find myself caught off between a legion group on my 12 and a legion group on my um everywhere else. I perch myself atop one of the towers, firing down at my foes like I'm a little boy throwing rocks at fish, and once again we hit a tragic moment. My cowboy repeater is gone, lost its life and ammunition. You were a good friend. I venture back outside to the halfway point, and that's when I'm granted what I thought would be my freedom with the NCR Rangers climbing from the depths of hell to fight the Legion. And they they kind of do. The first assault works out in my favor. So does the last assault. That's it. From here on out, I lose my life, my liberty, my single shotgun, my lever action shotgun, and all of my will to live. Though my will to live being lost comes a bit later. Oh no, wait, it comes right now because I have to deal with the Legate's camp. Immediately upon walking in, I get my shit rocked and my head blown up. Ballistic fists, am I right? My sniper rifle and hunting rifle do the trick. But now comes the pure putrid hell that made me regret choosing this run while I was doing it. I started off by losing my 10mm submachine gun I picked up from Helios 1 way back when. I didn't tell you guys about it, my mistake. It was a shadow pickup, didn't really matter all too much because I only got 60 10mm ammo. Then, fighting two more of the guards, I lose my laser rifle as well. It goes kaput, but I'm not too sad. I was purposely breaking this to get it out of the way, as it wasn't really that good compared to what I had. Then, fighting the same exact guards, I nearly lose my service rifle that I've had for this damn near entire run, and here comes the annoyance. I only have my sniper rifle, my hunting rifle, my plasma rifle, and my service rifle left to use. The melee weapons will never come in handy. Think of them as bug types, because they were for sure bugging me that they weren't more useful. First and foremost, I would 
would like to give you some stats as you watch me hilariously fuck up my fights against Lanius back to back. I am currently level 20, and was before Lanius spawned in. That means that Legate Lanius will be level 26 upon fighting him. He spawns with 1.3 times the levels that I have. Now that isn't necessarily too bad, right? I mean, I can take down a Deathclaw if I give it enough time. Well, he also has anywhere between 845 and 900 health starting at level 15, his lowest possible level, and maxing out at level 30, his maximum level. Now with that out of the way, let's roughly give him 865 health, a healthy middle ground. If I were to just use my hunting rifle, which was dealing 52 damage per bullet due to reaching guns 50, that tells me I would have to land roughly 16 shots in a row to kill him. However, I'm also playing on hard, which means I deal about 75% of my total damage to an enemy instead of 100%, which means that I would have to land roughly 20 shots in order to kill him. That's in a row. However, again, Lanius has 19 damage threshold on his armor, meaning I'm only dealing 20 damage per shot with the hunting rifle if we ignore any possible damage resistance calculation, which means I'm having to shoot him 43 fucking times to kill him. This is why I chose to boost my luck to 9, so I have the highest chance possible to get critical hits and avoid shooting him 43 times, especially because my hunting rifle would absolutely break with how little condition it actually had. Now, that wouldn't be an issue. I mean, it is clearly an issue, but it wouldn't be, except he's 80% faster than I am. And if I find myself caught out by him, he also has his two, count them two, guards with their ballistic fists, which have the highest base damage for unarmed weapons, plus an additional 50% damage because I'm on hard mode. Lanius also has a 15% chance to knock me down with every hit, so I I'm basically dead if that happened. On top of all of that, he has groups of legionaries appearing from the cliff horks with marksman carbines, machetes, and chainsaws to fuck me up even more. So needless to say, this gets absolutely tough. So what do I do? Well, I try, and I try, and I try, and I try, and I believe, I believe I try over and over and over and over again. It takes me 23 tries and one journey through the deep underground of New Vegas until I find a proper solution to this conundrum. On my 16th try, I did manage to kill him, meaning I can do it, but I also have to deal with everyone else, including the marksman Nimi McNimrods hiding in the rocky versions of trees before I can get back to the main gate. And what do you know, after I tried again the next day after rage quitting, OBS didn't record the proper window, so I don't have the footage. That means whatever footage you're seeing now is a dramatic recreation of what happened and not the original footage. I tried my best to keep it as close as possible from what I remember. I basically found that I could crouch near the entrance and take out the two ballistic fist guards standing at the big man's tent using my expert marksman skills. Then I had to take out the chainsaws, machetes, and other assorted guard sprinkles that came from the hills around the camp to ruin my day. They were pretty easy considering they didn't have as much damage threshold as Lanius did. I'd, I'm not sure they even have any damage threshold at all, just damage resistance. After kick flipping my way across their faces with the ultimate gun technique known as bullets, I had to deal with the marksman carbine kids on the cliff sides. They weren't too tough despite them taking upwards of 4 shots at one time or another, so yeah, they were actually kinda tough. However, after they died came Lanius. Oh boy, big fella Lanius. In my many attempts at this fight, I found that I actually could do a half circle near this workbench and box, and Lanius could only access the small hill there when he did a power attack. This of course meant that he would have to get close enough, which he did several times. He also had grenades, so he didn't have to get close enough every time, but I try not to remember that. Unfortunately for me, he also picked up the marksman carbine once or twice and annihilated me on the spot. But on my final attempt, I managed to score enough critical hits to push through his damage threshold and deliver the final blow. A headshot shot right to the center of his stupid stone mask thing. You can tell that this was the dramatic reenactment because he not only did a backflip, but he landed perfectly on the other side of the barrel behind him, tucked neatly away for the NCR to deal with later on. And after that I spoke to General Oliver about leaving to become a courier once again after putting on Lanius's helmet, and I beat Fallout New Vegas as if it were a Nuzlocke challenge run, with just a plasma rifle, a hunting rifle, and a sniper rifle remaining. All in all, a fun run, even if mildly annoying in the end. If you enjoyed, like the video. If you found any information to be misleading or you did not enjoy, dislike the video instead. Don't forget to subscribe so you can continue to either love or hate my content. Oh, and share this video wherever you can. I appreciate it ahead of time. My name was Jack, and it always has been. 
Thank you for watching. Oh, and remember, patrolling the Mojave almost makes me wish for a nuclear winter. Stay lucky.